Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. A common term or phrase I often hear is, I want to shape up my body, I want to build my physique. But what does that actually mean? And more importantly, how does that actually work? It's not about finding the magic workout split, the magic exercise. It actually comes down to volume delegation, which is what I'll be diving into today's video. If you're new here, my name is Alex Mendoza. I'm an online fitness coach and I help men just like yourself lose weight and build muscle. Being a business owner myself, I know how difficult and challenging it can be managing your time, having other commitments when it comes to work, family, and even social events. So if that's you, you're at the right place, hit the subscribe button because this video will add a ton of value. A few of the members will be joining us today to give you a bit of an insight on how it works, but most importantly, a realistic perspective on what the journey looks like. Let's just dive into it. We often hear this term, right? I want to be in better shape, but like, what does that actually mean, right? So today I'm going to show you guys how to actually manipulate physical composition despite your genetics and how to actually change the proportions of your body through proper training and programming. And feel free to jump in, share your thoughts, uh, maybe even experiences as I go through these slides. I wanna hear live feedback from you guys. Please be very interactive. Here's where everyone goes wrong, right? Your training split actually doesn't matter. It's more of an umbrella term, right? And I'm sure you're familiar with the push pull legs, the upper lower, upper lower, the bro split, chest, back, shoulders, arms and legs, and you know, the whole upper, upper legs, upper legs. Previously, what have you guys used within your programming? Or the generic bro split, you know, chest, back, like shoulders, legs, arms. Back. That was like Monday to Friday, but. What about yourself, Parveen? Yeah, same. I was doing like Monday, Tuesday, uh, Monday, my chest and Tuesday back and then legs, mm -hmm. um, then shoulders and then uh, chest and back again mm -hmm. on Friday. And Eric, what was your training split like previously? Uh, previously, it was basically a bro split. It was yeah, just yeah. like chest. One, one body part. Yeah, and if I yeah. found a, a body part lagging, I would do that twice a week. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. So a common problem also people tend to do is overreach. So if you can't consistently train five times a week, I've said this multiple times, don't, right? You don't need to be training six times a week, seven times a week either. So a lot of people fall off their program and find it difficult to follow the splits because they try to bite more than they can chew. We all have other commitments, whether that be work, family, where we're suffering from time constraints. And the last thing we want to actually have is three sessions one week, five sessions next week. It just creates imbalances, which can lead to potential injury. But what I primarily focus on as well, on top of that is proportions, right? If you're delegating more volume to your chest, Obviously your chest is gonna be a strong muscle group in comparison to your other areas. But our goal here is not to just put on muscle. We want to put on muscle in the right places to help amplify the aesthetic illusion, right? Broad shoulders, small waist. And that really comes down to a mixture of diet, but also a mixture of programming. And I'll show you how that works. So think of it as a, as a tree, right? Our training split, is, it's like the tree stump. So for example, we have push pull legs. What your programming looks more like are the yeah. roots of the trees, right? So you have push pull legs at the top, but what does it actually look like? How is the volume delegated? And here's an example. It might be two exercises delegated to triceps, three exercises delegated to chest, and two exercises delegated to shoulders. And we need to understand why and how we order that in priority and how that works. Yeah, as I mentioned, you know, each root is divided into more subgroups. So push as an example. And this, this is what really matters. Like not only how many um, exercises are included, per muscle group, but in comparison to how much you can recover from, how much you can maintain. So there's a bunch of other variables that you need to t take into account when it comes to programming. This is why when we ask for the lifestyle analysis sheet submission to be as thorough as possible, specifically when it comes down to time, right? Because that will influence our programming. From there, decide where we need to spend more volume or delegate more volume and how will the future of the program look as well. When we design programs, we assess your physical composition, which requires the images that you submit on that lifestyle analysis sheet. Most people lack lateral delts, upper chest, upper lats. You might notice that you might have a lot of back volume and a lot of lateral delt movements as well, right? So that's front delts, not so much, primarily because a lot of the times people train chest incorrectly, which then loads the front delt. So we actually don't prioritize it as much unless you have that as a lagging group. Right. By delegating the right volume in the right areas, this helps your waist look smaller um, as you continue to lose that body fat, giving you a more balanced physique. Now, our results are not 
accidental. Everyone that hopped on here before you signed up, you might have noticed that a lot of the physiques we develop, big lats, big shoulders, right? Because that's, again, that's the look that we're all going for. And this really the, comes down to... Sorry. Great eye shape. Exactly, exactly. More, we want like a more, more so like an hourglass figure, right? Because we also, you don't want to forget about the legs, right? Yeah. <laughs> so not just a Dorito, maybe two Doritos. <laughs> but they're very specifically planned and curated based on your physique. There are a set of guidelines that you need to follow when it comes into programming. So we'll dive into that. I did create a training guide, which will be available soon. So I'll, for the people that will, will be watching this video, I will attach that in the bio. It'll be 15 USD. But for the members, so everybody part of this call, every part of the program, you guys can get that for free. Just as a bit of a guide, if you want to have some spare time to read over it, go over it. I made it very, very simple, very digestible, surface level, but in depth enough, right? To give you enough understanding. So when that's done, it's in production right now. I'll um, send that over and you guys can have your own copy. Another common question that people ask is how often should you train your muscle, right? Training frequency. Studies do show one to three times a week is a great place to start. Twice a week is better than once three times a week is yet to be determined if it's better than two. The biggest influencing factor is ultimately determined by total volume. Does everybody here understand how total volume is calculated? What does that look like? Are you guys familiar with that? No, not me. No. no. Okay. No, Eric. Not cool. really. Um, so total volume is an equation. It sets weights reps, right? We can increase a manipulate total volume on a weekly basis by increasing one of those three variables. You'll notice in your programming, we tend to focus on the weight load increase per week. And we can no longer do that. We then transition into increasing rep count per week. Then when we can no longer do that, we then transition into a new phase where we add more volume through sets, maybe drop sets, depending on your time constraints. Is this sort of in regard to like progressive overload? Correct. Correct. That's how progressive overload works. It's an accumulation of volume on a week to week basis. However, where people go wrong is that they only pay attention to the numerical values. Just because your volume isn't going up through reps, sets, or whatever that might be, there are other ways you can manipulate volume. An example being slower tempo or holding the contraction at the top of the movement longer, or even slower rest time. You might notice that some of you guys each week, especially in the beginning, you get better at your contraction. You get better at mind muscle connection that it becomes more challenging to progress. Now, just because the weight isn't going up, we will often ask you, hey, do you feel the recruitment better? And if your answer is yes, then we're okay with that too. Now, I did make a video. I think that was a video you guys watched, right? The five extra results, very insightful stuff. Because at the end of the day, I want you guys to walk out of here understanding why we do what we do so that you don't have to get another fucking coach later, right? Like we want to be your final solution. Obviously, accountability will be a forever thing. I still have a coach because I slack off sometimes. Just like you guys, I deal with a lot of stress when it comes to work and other commitments. I just want to be told what I need to do and I just go get shit done, right? And I'm sure you guys are the same, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot easier yeah. that way. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. And that's like where the investment lies. You're able to allocate more brain function to making more important decisions. Now, other studies also state that it makes zero difference if the volume is the same. So there's a lot of information out there. And today I'll show you and explain what you guys can do and how we do. So, you know, you understand it better. I do dive into deeper concepts on YouTube. So if you missed that video, watch this one. That's very insightful. I don't know if that's a video I go through when it comes down to progressive overload, but these like recordings jam packed with value if you miss any in the future. So play them back. Another common question people ask is how many sets per week? Again, articles and paper state anywhere between 10 to 20 sets is a good range for hypertrophy, but there's also a lot of information out there. It really comes down to balance at the end of the day. It's about how much volume you can recover from right? And ultimately it is quality over quantity. So for beginners, what I used to do was program a lot more volume to compensate for the lack of experience. But now we thought, you know, it's best to just teach you guys how to do it right from the get go, especially if you have a busy schedule, we're not going to jam pack five sets, right? It's, it's too much if it's done really right. But if your quality isn't there, it kind of compensates for that volume. So it's all about a balancing act. How is quality assessed, right? I'll dive into these terms a little bit deeper, but here's a couple of variables that contribute to execution quality. And this is we're very particular when it comes to tempo and RIR in our programming on the app. We're looking at RIR, RPE, which defines intensity, contraction quality, form, execution, time under tension, and range of motion. Are you guys familiar with these terms? 
Yeah. Yes. Sort cool. Of. What was that? Sorry, Parveen. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Like, sort of. <laughs> is there anything you'd like me to explain a bit further uh, into? Tempo. So. Tempo. What do you mean by tempo? Great question. So tempo, you'll notice on the app, you might see like three, two, one, two. Have you seen that yet? Yeah. 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 The, like the two, one, one, two, or two, that's the one. two. Yeah, that's the one. And I don't remember off the top of my head the arrangement, but it's, I believe it's the first digit is eccentric. Second digit is pause at the bottom. Third digit is concentric, so the way up. And fourth digit is pause at the top. You can Google weightlifting tempo. There's an easy diagram to understand. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. So please submit your videos at the end of every week because we'll be able to assess if your tempo is correct and your true training intensity. And I think I dive into this in the next slide, actually. The difference in RIR0, meaning reps in reserve, versus RIR1 or RIR2 is actually not that significant. However, if you are training low volume, low intensity, you can expect less growth. Hence why we compensate for higher volume for beginners because usually their intensity is not correct. If you don't know what RPE is, you can also look up a diagram on Google, simply Google RPE, and it will kind of give you a guideline of a scale of zero to 10. But again, send through videos so we can assess and guide you through. Now, the reason we like to program for RIR zero to one is purely for work ethic. And also because people think they're training to failure, but they don't know what failure feels like, right? So we try to just get you guys to push yourself as hard as possible because oftentimes we tend to have one or more reps in reserve. The more advanced you go, you'll notice our programming parameters might be a little bit different, but we're talking, you know, six months time to a year's time, right? For me, I do two sets, train RIR1, but that's a more accurate representation of what RIR1 actually looks like. The goal is to get you guys there as well. Does this give you a bit more understanding on how your programming is designed? It's better getting the information in person instead of like sitting there trying to Google everything and yeah. like take representations from all those pages of just yeah. drawings and writing. <laughs> it's a lot of reading. It's a lot of articles. And I just like to keep things simple. Look, if you want to be a bodybuilder, you want to get that 1% progression, go for it. Do all these crazy shit. But we're just day-to-day -day people, right? We're not competitors. I used to do a lot of shoots in the past and I wanted to do competing in the past, but I'm just like, it's not the life for me. It's way too much sacrifice of life quality for like a fucking plastic medal award. There's no way I'm ever going to make myself to the Olympia and beat Chris Bumstead. So I'm just like, it's just not realistic. <laughs> I rather focus on my life quality, my, my business. Like these are the things that matter to me. And I want to look good and feel good throughout the process too. Because people treat you so differently when you have shoulders so circular. Right, You just have so much more presence yes. when you come to meetings, when you close sales, people just respect you more. Again, to remove the complications, I want to explain what we do, how it works, you know, kind of go from this to, to that. And again, the midsection is purely just comes down to calorie deficit. For the people watching this, you cannot target or spot reduce fat. It just doesn't work. We can make the illusion faster by broadening the right areas, which again is the lateral delts and the upper lats. Your body is like a sculpture, right? I want you to look at volume like clay. The more you recover, the more clay you have. When you're sculpting a statue, you use different tools and you spend more time on finer details. You spend more time when you try to refine an area of clay or statue, right? Similar to exercises. So if you have a weak chest, you want to add more volume to your chest to keep things basic and surface level. In this situation, the only time I will say more is better, right? I rarely say that, but let me explain. When we create programs, there's typically three training phases. I dive into that a bit deeper in another video. I think it was, I think it was the first video you guys watched. So make sure to revisit if you don't remember. This is where we, where things might get a little bit more numerical. So if you do have questions, jump in. Phase one can include between eight to 13 sets. I'm sure you have seen that in your workout program so far, something between there. Now, hands up if you thought, whoa, this is so little. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, Oliver was like, this was sweet. I'm yeah. so glad I'm only doing eight sets. Awesome. Yeah. So Eric, I know you used to train a lot more like very high sets when we refine and tweak, you, you'll, you'll experience it yourself um, through assessment and judgment. You will notice that it really is about quality over quantity and you almost shift into a perspective of, I only have two sets. 
right? Because I used to train five sets per exercise. It was so, such a waste of time. But you're like, I only have two sets. It pushes you closer to that true mechanical failure, bringing your intensity up. Having said that, we never want to compromise form because the closer you train to failure, the easier it is to break your form, which makes it easier for you to get injured. So form is important and you'll learn how to gauge that gap of mechanical failure versus true failure, right? Do you guys understand the difference between true mechanical, sorry, true failure and mechanical failure? No, would I, okay. mechanical Eric, failure you... be just from you not being able to push that weight and then, no, actually, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, nah, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> you, look, man, you gave it a shot. You were on the right path, right? So the mechanical failure ultimately refers to being able to complete that last rep with the right recruitment. So the minute, let's say you're doing a bicep crawl, the minute too much shoulder is involved, just end the lift, right? It's just not worth it. I highly, highly ask you guys to be cautious when it comes down to hack squats. A lot of people bust their backs doing this. So when you are doing the movement and we will go through exercise analysis in future, make sure your bracing's correct. Make sure your back is making contact with the padding and make sure foot placement is correct. Typically what people do is they'll go train to what they think is mechanical failure, but they're actually beyond that. And they're now using their back their knees, their form is all out of whack and you're just gonna end up hurting yourself. The minute you bust your back, living is difficult. <laughs> Cause I used to squat like 140 kilos. The form was okay, but for the most part it sucked. <laughs> and there was a point when I was like in my early twenties, I couldn't even touch my toes. It was that painful. So I spent so much money on physiotherapy and rehab and it took me forever to fix my back. And it really just came down to queuing. Another reason why injuries tend to occur is poor muscle groups. Bit of a recap. So in phase one, we typically include five to six movements, one to two sets each, eight to 15 reps. So th those are kind of like our base parameters, right? So per session, we're looking at eight to 13 reps, uh, sets, my bad. Now, again, as I said, training experience, beginners, we tend to add more volume just to compensate for lack of intensity. If you train right, you can be more efficient. You don't need to spend hours in the gym uh, and you can make more progress. So that's how I'm able to train only one hour a day, you know, five times a week, still make results. That's ex excluding cardio, of course. And we also have clients, you know, that are training only three hours a week and progressing really fast as well. Now five would be ideal, but again, don't overreach. Two people can have the same program, but the results will be different purely because of experience. If I gave Arthur the same program he has now earlier before, he'll be progressing more now, primarily due to his familiarity with his physique and like just how his body works. You will get to a point where your body speaks to you and you understand. You'll understand when you eat this, you feel this. When you eat this, this makes you feel like shit. You understand why you feel sluggish when you eat too much of this. The more experience you get, connectivity is better, RPE is better, form is better, adherence and data management is better as well. Let's apply this into practice. So let's say you want to grow your shoulders, your triceps, but your shoulders play top priority, right? So let's say you're doing the push pull leg split and you have a total of 11 sets to work with. So we will include two shoulder exercises, which will be a total of five sets, one chest exercise, which is a total of two sets, two tricep exercises, which is a total of four sets. Let's break that down even more. So think of it as a tree stump, and we're going down to the roots now. So we're looking at lateral raises, three sets, right? Because we want to look broader, and two for front delts to give it a more complete round look. Again, typically a lot of people have overdeveloped front delts, because they don't train their chest right. And for chest, people usually lack upper portion. So we'll do two sets of that. We'll do two sets on the close grip bench and two sets on rope extensions, targeting your long head and your lateral head, right? Again, just to give you a more complete look, no matter if you're looking front side, you know, you have muscles there. You're not just like all front, all back, or just all upper body, no legs, which is what we see a lot and we want to avoid. We'll prioritize the lateral delts, the lats, and the vastus lateralis, right? When we build that up, we then look at your upper chest, your triceps, and your hamstrings. This is order of priority. Again, it really depends on your body composition. And then after that, we'll look at the lower chest, the biceps, because these are the only muscles that apparently people like to train. Bench and bicep curls, right? So that's usually developed when people come into this. So that's like the last thing we pay attention to. In summary, Dedicate more sets to priority muscle groups. It's literally as simple as that because the more you understand how it works, the easier it is for you to follow and the more conviction you have, which allows you to just stay on track. Anybody have questions? Uh, you kind of just explained the, the saying, trust the process. Yes, essentially. But yeah. I want to show you the process so it's easier to trust, right? Yeah. 
it's kind of like if I ask you guys, hey, sign up to my coaching and you have no idea what the process looks like, you're not going to trust me. But if I show you the process, it's easier to trust and it's easier to commit to. So adherence is ultimately the most important thing. Consistency is what brings in results. And I want you to understand why we do 12 week blocks. For someone it might be longer, just depending on adherence quality. It really varies to the individual. Eric, do you have any questions? Anything you'd like to add? No, I'm just curious to see how the lower sets will help develop more we'll feel <laughs> yeah and look if you respond quite well to it we might up your intensity a little bit earlier it comes dependent on um naz's data and his analysis <clears throat> but i'll be jumping in as well just to see and if you do have problems do let me know if you have any concerns i'm always here arthur is there anything you would like to add yeah i think it's it's really important to not only trust the process because it's a two-way thing but you have to trust the process and then from the client side, that's the adherence. So if you're not getting the results, you have to question whether you've actually is consistent enough for a mm. period of time to actually get the results. Because it's it's a combination of a lot of things. You know, you have to trust the process. You have to communicate with your coach. You have to make sure that you're consistent with whatever you're doing to get the results. If one of that is not there, then the results will not come as quickly as you like the biggest learning from me is to give it time because nothing comes overnight so you just got to be really patient <laughs> arthur um when we first started he had a lot of concerns i think very similar to i don't correct me if i'm wrong arthur but total volume i think was a concern um i i could be completely wrong but you know, I just remember us going back and forth in conversations, having doubts, having fears. That's just because maybe some areas were just not as explained thoroughly. But as soon as I did, Arthur was able to commit to it easier and adhere to it easier. And as the results came, he just stopped questioning everything. <laughs> like there was a yeah. time where it's just like, what's this? What's that? Why are we doing this? How come this? How come that? As he continued to progress, I'm just like, Arthur, this is what we need to do. He's like, okay, <laughs> you know? So it really comes down to that relationship that you establish with us. And please, the more open you are, and it doesn't have to be just about training because other areas impact our training performance, right? If you need someone to speak to about anything, this is a safe place, right? Another reason I wanted to make this so community driven is because a lot of guys out there, they don't really have many people to talk to. And I know for some, we're just strangers on the internet, but the goal here is so that we are able to do things in person and i mean arthur and i have never met in person but i feel like we've known each other <laughs> like we've known each other for so long now that we feel like we, we we know each other really well and now that he's back we will link up but the point is just to have a space where everybody can talk about challenges um, whether that be relationship whether that be um business finances whatever it might be uh, the, the point of this is to build a really good community of of high performing guys because when i was going through stuff myself it was very challenging um, especially being you know 25 there's not many other 25 year olds i can speak to that can relate to the things that i go through later as i expanded my network and the deeper i got into circles i realized oh it's normal to feel this way which made it easier for me to accept feeling like shit. i'm like uh this sucks but this is how it's supposed to be so i'm okay with it Right. Praveen, is there anything you would like to ask? Anything you'd like to add? No, I'm good. Thanks. You're good. Awesome. First impression, everyone. I would love to hear your thoughts. First impressions as in... What do you think? What this, this for today's thing? Correct. <laughs> Not too bad. It was pretty informative. Uh, yeah. Great. And like I said earlier, it's just good to have like a face to talk to instead of looking mm -hmm. at pictures and writing on screens. I think it's great. I think putting a face, like Oliver said, and seeing other guys who are in the same boat going through the same thing. I think that that helps it. the camaraderie kind of sort of getting the hang of that. But I mean, just putting stuff there and just knowing that other people are in the same boat as you definitely helps motivate and other days that you have that you're feeling not a hundred percent or whatever you have the other guys to be like oh yeah i had i felt like that yesterday or yeah it's okay you'll bounce back stuff like that just just the the guidance and basically friendships from around the world yeah and i really want it to be a network that people can connect as well but if there's anything else you guys would like to see in the future please i want to continue i want to build this community and the only way i can build it is through the feedback that you guys provide you know we've already done two inf um, informative conversations back to back so maybe next week we can go more emotional or psychological 
um, just having a nice variety of different aspects. I'm a big believer. I used to think that it's just all bodybuilding. That's the only thing that matters in life. Um, but I guess as I evolved, <laughs> I started to realize, you know, there are other areas that take a lot of priority. Family as well. I think for the longest time, I was never there for my family because I've been so focused on growing the business. Thanks to you guys and thanks to the team, I'm actually, I was actually able to travel with them for the first time in five years or four years because I actually had Naz being able to manage. Shane, I was there to support you guys while I was able to, you know, just be in the moment, spend time with them. We tend to take a lot of things for granted until it's gone. And I, I don't want to be in a position where I'm like, Oh, I wish I spent more time for some people. I wish I prioritized my health more because a lot of people, they hesitate to pull the trigger until they're suffering from so much pain, right? At that point, it's almost too late to make a change. But the beauty of everybody here is that you might be there. You might not be there, but regardless, you're deciding to take the necessary steps forward to be able to ultimately be able to do the things that really we value. And I'm sure for you guys, yes, you want to look good, to feel good, but that stems a lot deeper into, I want to be there for my kids. I want to show them how to be healthy. I want to have the knowledge and education to transfer it to other people, right? It's like building muscle and losing fat, whatever it might be is, is very surface level. Like we want to be able to change and help you achieve your deeper desires. Some of you guys run businesses. Some of you guys are dads. Some of you guys are, you know, whatever it might be, we're all trying to do something deeper. Praveen, is there anything you would like to, to add, share? Oh, this is my first um, call. Yeah. It's very informative. Um, you get more knowledge video calls, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's a point. Like the calls with Naz, it's like, here's a feedback. Here's what you need to do. Here's some explanation. Um, and if we want to dive deeper, we can go here. I did want to add one of my clients actually requested for this type of, uh, she suggested this. And being female, I wanted to add just a quick touch up that for women, obviously we don't need to train the lower chest similar to the way men do. So similar proportions when it comes to women, but obviously allocation a little bit more in the glutes, but so the, the same elements, the same principles lie. That's all I wanted to say. So thank you to her for uh, inspiring today's lecture. That's it for today. I, I like this cause like that took us to 49 minutes and it wasn't like a lot of awkward ums and ahs and what do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> right? Um, so smash it out this week, guys. Let me know how you go, Eric. And Arthur, if you ever need anything, need any reviews or second thoughts or opinions, feel free to message me on, um, on Discord, bro. Always a pleasure to have you here. And we'll link up soon. Let me know when you're available. We'll wrap it up there. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Nice meeting you guys. Enjoy. Enjoy.